This lesson dives into rhythm theory by breaking down how drum grooves are created. The video is targeted towards all musicians to better understand what's happening behind the kit so we can better lock in on our instruments. It's also good for producers to learn how to program beats and even drummers to get a better understanding of what's going on theoretically. By the end of the video you should have a deeper understanding of time signatures, beat, subdivision, common terminology and how drums can create a groove. So let's start with a measurement of time which is called a bar or a measure. We're going to set the time signature to 4-4. Four, four. The bottom number can only be the numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 and so on. And these numbers all refer to a note value. So for example, 1 is a whole note or a semi-brief, 2 is a half note or a minim, 4 is a quarter note or a crotchet, an 8 is an eighth note or a quaver, and 16 is a sixteenth note or a semi-quaver. The top note means how many of those note types can fit in a bar or a measure. 4-4 four, four is the most common time signature. This means we can fit four quarter notes or crotchets per bar. Because 4-4 four, four is so common, sometimes you see the time signature written with a C instead of 4-4. Four, four. C meaning common. Tempo is the overall speed, and this is measured in BPM, which stands for beats per minute. This is how many beats will fit in a minute of time. This project will be set at 90 BPM and the beat will be set to quarter notes or crotchets. To create a drum groove with forward momentum, the snare is usually always on the beats two and four. This is called the back beat. When an audience claps along with a song, it should nearly always be on beats two and four, the back beat. The next most important part of the drum kit is the kick. Adding the kick really grounds the groove and gives a sense of where the start of the bar is. For now we'll just play the kick on every beat and this is called 4 to the floor. The beat can be subdivided in many different ways. This is the role of the hi-hat symbol or the ride symbol. So we can divide the beat into two to give an eighth subdivision feel. When we count this, we count. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. Now we have a mixture of on beats and off beats. If we wanted to create more interest, we can place the kick on off beats and this creates the effect of syncopation. We can also experiment with syncopating the snare and even adding things like open hi-hat to create interest with syncopation. Note that to keep our forward momentum, we are still basing our snare around beats two and four. And in most cases, there will be a kick on beat one. So at the moment, we are feeling four beats per bar, dividing each beat by two, meaning there is an eighth feel per bar. We can actually subdivide it again and feel four subdivisions per beat, or to create a sixteenth feel, like this. And we count. 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and a 4 e and a 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and a 4 e and a Now that we can hear that 16th subdivision, we can experiment with different kick and snare patterns and different hi-hat patterns. But with all these combinations, we're still maintaining a solid backbeat and kick on one to create forward momentum. In this current example, you can hear that the snare that isn't hitting on beats 2 and 4 is playing very soft, feathering that snare drum. These are called ghost notes, and they help to outline the subdivision. Now, if we want to play our groove half time, all we do is we double the time of our backbeat. So that will mean the snare will only play on beats 3, like this. However, if we give the instruction of half-time feel, it means all the other instruments play at the regular speed while the drums stay at half-time, like this. Okay, so we'll take it back to the regular groove. Now here's an example of double-time feel, where the backbeat doubles up and the snare plays on the off-beats of the bar, while the rest of the instruments stay in the regular spot. 
the instruction is to go double time without the word feel, it means the other instruments need to follow the double time as well. Now there are some options of how we can feel this beat in the bar. We can feel it in four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or we can feel it in two like this. One, two, one, two. And as music gets faster, sometimes it is easier to feel the music in two beats rather than four beats per measure. So to direct the musician to feel it in two beats per bar, we would change the time signature to 2-2. Two, two. This means four crotchets in the bar can still fit, but we're only feeling two beats per measure. We can also use the cut common time signature to indicate a 2-2 two, two bar. Let's take it back to our original 4-4 groove. Now so far we've only divided the beat in even numbers, so the 2 or 4, which means simple time. But there's one more division we can explore, which is dividing the beat into 3. This is called compound time. And we count it like this. 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a. Now there's two ways that we can express this feel in sheet music or in the recording software. We can think of these as eighth note triplets in a 4-4 time signature, which means there are three eighth notes per beat. Or we can change the time signature. So in this case, we still want to feel four beats per bar. That's how we want the musician to feel the music. But because the subdivision of beat is in three quavers, there's no note value that we can express numbers that will represent three quavers. So then we have to push that top number out to represent that there are actually 12 quavers or eighth notes which can fit in the bar. So even though the time signature reads 12, eight, we are still feeling that solid pulse of four beats per bar, meaning every beat has three quavers attached to it. In my experience, I've seen sheet music which uses 4-4 four, four and triplet subdivision, and the same song with a different arranger using compound time signatures. At the end of the day, it all sounds the same to the listener, so the experience for the listener doesn't change. It's just how the composer chooses to express it in the sheet music. For the same reason, I see the time signature 6, 8 and 12, 8 used quite interchangeably, with the only difference being one arrangement is feeling every bar in 4 and one arrangement is feeling every bar in 2. It just depends how the arranger wants the musician to feel the music or how they want to organise their notes in the bar. It makes no difference to the ear. Now that we are feeling the subdivision in 3, we can experiment with different kick snare patterns. Remembering to keep the snare on 2 and 4 to keep that forward momentum happening. When the groove is outlining a solid triplet subdivision, we call this a shuffle, used in many genres of music, but particularly rock and blues. If we subdivide those hi-hats from 8s to 16s, we get what's called a half-time shuffle. The reason they're calling it a half-time shuffle is we're feeling 6 hi-hats between the backbeat rather than 3 that we felt in the regular shuffle. So we're feeling the backbeat in half the time. Now we'll take it back to 4-4 four, four simple time. Let's talk about swing. Now swing is a rhythmic characteristic and many people confuse it for the genre of jazz. However, swing can be found in many genres. So it's more of a rhythmic characteristic than a genre within itself. Although there is a genre called the swing era, which might confuse things. Now swing can be felt in different ways too. So many different musicians feel their swing. What you're hearing now is pure swing. So if we were to go into the recording software, quantize our eight note groove to swing at 100%, what actually happens is it divides the eighth into a triplet and plays the first and third notes of that triplet. So at the moment, it sounds very similar to the shuffle. Now, if we were to make the swing 50% quantized, it would bring the offbeat hi-hat closer to the center of the beat. And if we quantize to 150%, the offbeat hi-hat becomes closer to the end of that beat. 
When notating swing in sheet music, we don't need to write the triplets in or put it in a compound time signature. We can keep it in common time, but simply put the term swing at the top of the chart. That will direct the musician to play all the eighth notes swung. Okay, so at this slower tempo, it basically sounds like another shuffle or compound time signature. But where swing really takes off is at faster tempo. So we'll just double the tempo now and you can hear the swing groove in action in a rock beat. So in this double tempo, we keep feeling the count as one, two, three, four, a one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, a one, two, and three, four. Notice when I'm counting it, I'm accenting the off beats more and I'm leaning into syncopation to outline that swing groove. So if we don't want a song to swing, we play it straight. Listen to this groove in a straight feel. Okay, let's take it back to our regular 4-4 straight groove. So with that swing feel, we were exploring that by swinging the 8th notes. We can also swing the 16th notes, like this. Now let's just keep that fundamental subdivision, but change the kick snare pattern. So again, in the sheet music, we wouldn't need to write in all these 16th note triplets. We would just direct the musician by writing swing 16. And remember, the amount of swing can be changed. So here is a 50% quantization. And here is a 150% quantization. So the other parts of the drum kit include the ride cymbal. And the ride cymbal can be used just like the hi-hat to outline the subdivision of the bar. But what the ride cymbal does is create a washier sound, a more sustained sound. So it's really good to lift a section of a song like a chorus. We also have crash cymbals. These are good to punctuate certain accents or the, the first beat of a new section. And then we have toms. These are great for creating fills to lead us into the start of the next bar. We could also use toms as a subdividing instrument if you want a heavier sound. At the moment you are hearing the floor tom, which is the lowest tom, and it stands on the ground. But there are also rack toms, which are usually connected to the kick drum, and they sound higher. Okay, to finish off, let's listen to some common drum grooves that we hear in music. Keep in mind there's many different combinations and ways you can play these grooves, but listen to the fundamentals like where the backbeat sits and what the subdivision is. Let's start with the straight eight, sometimes called the money beat. Motown Straight 16 16 funk. The train beat. Bossa Nova. Reggae Jazz Twelve Eight Ballad
this video and committing to be a better musician. So whatever instrument you play, listen to where that beat sits, listen to where the backbeat hits, listen to what the subdivision is, and use this to inform your strumming patterns, comping patterns, bass lines, melodies, what notes you accent, and how you feel the groove. Thanks again for watching, and bye for now.